from New York City, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week, The Adventure of the Elusive Agent, Part Two. There it is, Holmes. 27 Ludwigstrasse. Ugly building. Yes, and there's the front door, Watson. Shall we mount the stairs and ring? Suicidal, I'd say. But if it's our only chance of finding that enemy agent and the plans that he's stolen... It is our only chance. And the security of the Empire depends on it. So come along. We enter this awful building alive and well. Although undoubtedly we will not leave this way. Come in, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. We've quite a reception prepared for you. <laughs> Dr. Watson, last week in relating the adventure of the elusive agent, you left off as you and Mr. Holmes were pursuing an espionage agent named Emil Marco. Yes, Mr. Harris. Shall I recall how we were led to his trail? Yes. It was 1913. An atmosphere foreboding gripped the continent. War with Germany was imminent. British plans of priceless value had been stolen by the Germans by a young woman named Pamela Norton, a German agent. This Norton girl turned over half of the plans that she'd stolen to a chap named Gustav, who, was, who represented the leader of a huge espionage ring. Following the disappearance of the plans, Sir Mycroft Holmes asked his brother Sherlock to step in. In short order, Holmes and I were close to capturing the girl. But uh, you may remember, Mr. Harris, we arrived too late. She'd been killed by the master spy because she refused to turn the other half of the plans over to him without receiving a gigantic suck. The master spy then vanished without having had time to seize the missing half from the girl's dead body. Detecting the odor of a rare tobacco about the room where the girl's corpse was found, Holmes and I, uh, we dashed to a shop in Soho, the shop of the chap named Grimsby. We'd half the plans, the Germans had the other half. Both sides were in a deadlock, for the plans were useless unless they were complete. Grimsby, the tobacconist, described his client who used that tobacco, a Mr. Emil Marco, he said. Tall, thin, with a weird habit of twitching his mouth. We learned that this Emil Marco, the master spy, uh, was in Paris at the Hotel Metropole. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Harris, Holmes and I were aboard the boat train for Dover on our way to Paris. We sat together, very silent and tense, realizing that every moment was vital. Holmes, the compartment door is opening. Yes, we have a visitor, Watson. Look, there's a hand. With a gun. Extinguish the lights in your compartment, Holmes. We'll do nothing of the sort. I will not enter until you have extinguished the lights. Do as he says, Watson. He couldn't possibly miss you from there. Well, I... Very well. Well, complete darkness. I'm sorry it is necessary for us to meet under these strange circumstances, Holmes, but it may in the future be necessary that you do not recognize me. Therefore, my request for darkness... But, George, I... Oh, I can see your silhouettes. If either of you attempts to move or calls for help, I will blow out your brains. What is the purpose of this visit, sir? You are journeying to Paris to find Mr. Emil Marco. What of it? I can save a great deal of time and trouble for you. Can you? Yes. I represent Mr. Marco. As you know, he already has half of a set of plans in his possession, but his portion is worthless because you have the other half of Indeed, and I do not intend to surrender it. Mr. Marco is fully prepared to make an intriguing offer. What is it? Give me your half of the plans. We will pay you 20,000 pounds. Hm, rubbish. Say 30,000? The plans are not for sale. 50,000. If you finish stating the nature of your offer, sir, you may leave. Huh. I've never found myself in a situation where enough money would not provide a happy solution. You have a price, Holmes, I'm sure. I most certainly have not. There may well be persons of differing political views who would betray the British Empire. I'm not one of them. Come, come, Holmes, very touching. Now, would you name your price? There isn't any. Oh, 
plans. You are forcing us to take the plans from you. If you can find my heart. And you are forcing us to kill you. If that can be arranged. Might I point out that in our organization we never kill our opponents in an ordinary manner? That we prefer to torture them to death? I'd accept the money if I were you. My answer is a definite and final no. You might inform Emil Marco that I intend to secure his half of the plans and return them to Whitehall. Very ambitious. But you underestimate the power of Marco's organization, which will now be devoted to securing your half of the plans and to conceiving new and exciting torture devices for you and Dr. Watson. Good night, gentlemen. I planned this as a short and pleasant visit. I trust that it was. Well, it's after the rascal Holmes. That's futile, Watson. He's armed. We're not. Even in these few seconds, doubtless he disappeared into another compartment. Besides, we've no idea what he looks like. We must wait, Watson, for Paris and the Hotel Metropole. Oh, Mama, I will open the door. Ah, bonsoir. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. I am Sherlock Holmes. My colleague, Dr. Watson. Oh, how do you do? Enchanté. The clerk downstairs told us this was Emile Marco's suite. It is. May we come in? Yes, of course. I am Mademoiselle Mathilde Piaget. Emile is not here. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. Thank you. May I help you? When will Mr. Marco return, Mademoiselle? Emile said he would return tonight at nine. You are a friend of his, I presume? <laughs> I met Emile at the bar of this hotel just a short time ago. But uh, we are already very close friends. You know much about him? I never ask questions. What my gentlemen acquaintances do is their business. I see. This Marco, is he uh, tall, thin? Yes, with green eyes. Fascinating. Exciting. Does he have a curious habit of twitching his mouth? He does. Well, he's our man, Holmes. He... What do you want with him? I thought you were more interested in details about your gentleman acquaintances. Mm, very well. Savez-vous, égal? I do not care. Emile has an exquisite suite here. He has invited me to enjoy it until his return. Would you care to wait? Have a drink? Perhaps we may become friends too. Thank you, no. We've more urgent matters at hand. Come, Watson, to our room. Mademoiselle. We shall return at nine sharp to meet Emil Marco. Uh, these are lovely rooms they've given us here at the hotel, eh, Holmes? Yes, Watson. But obviously an intruder has chosen to upset the decor. Yes, by Joe, someone has been here to our rooms. Made a ghastly mess of them. Look, they've opened every drawer in the chest. Uh, yes, forced open and the contents strewn on the floor. I should say the alluring demoiselle was also a member of this fantastic ring of spies that's closing in on us. Matilde? Do you really think so? Quite. Clearly, the objective was to lure us to Marco's suite, occupy us temporarily, while others went through our luggage here in our room. But the plans, Holmes, they were here in your valise. They may have stolen your half of the plans. Precisely why I'm rummaging through the luggage. Well, are they gone? Yes, Watson. The plans are gone. Well, then you bungled it, Holmes. For the first time in your t entire career, Holmes, you, you, you bungled it. And, uh, for such high stakes. Have I? Do you hear... Do you hear a strange sound, huh? Yes, I do. Coming from that closet to your left. Open it, Watson. Careful. Yes, right there. See anything in there? Well, one of my traveling bags, that's all. Are you sure? Absolutely. Bring the bag here to me quickly. All right. There you are. Yes, the chicken's coming from inside the bag. Open it, man, instantly. It may be a time bomb placed there by Marco's ring. Time bomb? Yes. Just one second. I'll just open this catch. Hurry, there. hurry. The clothing. Take it out, Watson. We must see. Yes. See the shorts and shoes. Yes, I see it, Holmes. It's a small black object. Quick, give it to me. Watson, open the window. Throw it, man. Hurry, go on, Holmes. We'll be killed. It went off in the yard. We were a split second away from being blown to bits. It's quite the stairway, Watson. Follow me. Uh, where to? Downstairs. I shall speak to the clerk at the main desk. I don't believe a word that French girl said. I do not believe Marco's gone until nine. I do believe 
that if we challenge this spy ring that has us trapped here in the hotel, it'll be death immediately, either for them or for us. And that is just the way I want it. Dr. Watson, I I can't recall you and Mr. Holmes being in a more baffling and dangerous situation than at the Hotel Metropole in Paris, a few steps behind Emil Marco, the elusive enemy agent. It was extremely dangerous, Mr. Harris. Marco's German spy ring, which seemed to be everywhere we turned, had found Holmes's half of the infinitely valuable British war plans and had vanished with it. Holmes and I hurried to the front desk of the hotel uh, to question the clerk. I understand, Clark, that Mr. Emil Marco will return here at nine this evening. Monsieur Marco? Yes. Uh, did you go to his suite earlier this evening, Monsieur Holmes? Yes, 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 I did. There was a young lady there. I am sorry that you went directly to Monsieur Marco's suite. If you had stopped to inquire here, I might have saved time for you. You see, Monsieur Marco left this afternoon. Uh, permanently. Well, all... And the young lady in his suite, Mathilde Piaget? The mademoiselle left uh, just a few moments ago. Do you know where she's gone? I believe she said something about the train to Berlin. Uh, she was in great hurry. To meet Emil Marco, no doubt, eh, Holmes? What time does the train depart for Berlin? It departs in approximately four minutes. Well, that's not enough time for us to reach the station. Perhaps not, Watson, but there's nothing to prevent our boarding the train after it and rushing to Berlin. Uh, the train after it departs in two hours, Monsieur Holmes. We should be aboard that train, Watson. Thank you, Clark. Uh, I thought this would be... Berlin, Holmes, are you mad? The very centre of the German government? Well, if we've almost been murdered outside of Germany, what on earth might happen to us were we found in Berlin? Our personal safety does not matter in this case, Watson. We are on a counter-espionage assignment for the British governor. By all the rules of international intelligence, you and I are expendable. My brother Mycroft made it clear that possession of these plans may mean triumph or defeat in a war with Germany. So, you and I, my dear Watson, are petty marionettes. We'll fetch our luggage and ride to Berlin. Oh, it's awfully crowded, this Berlin station, home. Yes, Watson, and I dare say this crowd is neatly spiced with Marco's men awaiting an opportunity to strike. <laughs> Very foolhardy, Holmes, to have entered the trap this way. How the dickens will you ever find that French girl? Or Marco? Elementary, my dear Watson, elementary. Yes, but, but in all of Berlin? With their secret agents at every turn, scheming about our death? I insist, as always, I have a method. Latest newspapers, buy your newspapers our here. Our first problem, Watson, will be to leave the station alive. Oh, it's quiet. Anyone in this crowd may be an agent with a knife or a gun. Quite. Keep your eyes open. Newspaper, gentlemen. No, thank you. All the news, gentlemen, just to finish. All the news. We told you we don't want a newspaper. Now, I'll be off with you. This way, Watson, there's the exit. A crude news vendor practically shoved the newspaper down our throats. <laughs> I say it's very dark outside the station here, Holmes. Is it advisable for us to step out this way? We cannot remain here at the railway terminal. We must find our coquette and Marco. Right in as they exit. One moment, Holmes. What is it? That news vendor. He seems to be following us. Just your imagination. No, I don't think so. He was at the center of the station when we stepped off the train. He's been right behind us ever since. All right. Walk through the exit. That's it. Watch him. He's still behind us. Duck into this doorway. It's as black as pitch. We'll lose him. Yes, right. Now, wait. See if he comes through the exit. We'll be helpless, Holmes. I'm sure he has a gun. Shh. Wait. There he is. He's looking about. I see you two gentlemen in the doorway. You will remain there, please. Do not move. Do not speak. I have a gun. I am coming over to chat with you. Good evening, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. If you intend to kill us, go on and shoot. Be over with it. I should like to introduce myself. My name is Collins, British Intelligence. (coughs) British Intelligence? Uh Then you received my wire. We did. Wire? What wire? The moment I knew the French girl had left for Berlin, Watson, while you were packing our luggage, I sent a wire here to British Intelligence in code. Mycroft had given me the information as to the technique, if required. My wire described Mathilde in detail. I told British intelligence to pick her up here at the station and keep after her. Then to communicate with us at the moment we left the train. We spotted her leaving the train. We followed her. Excellent. I'm sorry if I gave you a bit of a scare following you this way. I, I had no choice in the matter. I had to force you to stand here. 
Might have believed I was a German agent and fled. Where is Mathilde? She's gone to a building on the outskirts of Berlin. An old ramshackle building. Awful place. 27 Ludwigstrasse. Ah, thank you, Collins. You've done a superb job. Are you going to 27 Ludwigstrasse now, Mr. Holmes? It's very minute. Just you and Dr. Watson? Just the two of us. A third party might alarm the Germans so much that they'd simply fire at us as we approach the building. It must be more beguiling. Must appear as though Watson and I are merely dupes falling into their hands. Holmes, how can the two of us possibly hope to overcome whatever crew of blasted devils is at 27 Ludwig Strasse? It does seem rash, Mr. Holmes. Nevertheless, it must be done. Watson and I must enter that building if we're to find Marco and the plans. We must enter it alone, alive and well. Although we may not leave that way. That is how... 27 Ludwigstrasse. It's an ugly building. Mm. Front door, Watson. Can we mount the stairs and ring? Suicidal, I'd say. Not if it's our only chance. I'll... Come along, then. Monsieur Holmes. Dr. Watson, I am so happy to see you again. Mademoiselle, may we come in? Certainly. I'm delighted. Won't you make yourselves comfortable? Thank you. You've been expecting us, of course. Of course. We were sorry that our time bomb did not kill you at the Hotel Metropole. We realized you would continue your efforts to find Emil Marco and the plans our men took from your luggage. Where is Marco? I am afraid you will not meet him, Dr. Watson. And why won't we meet this Marco? Oh, because we are going to kill you, Monsieur Holmes. Oh? Oh, I am being rude. I have forgot. A cigarette? Frank? If you think we're going to remain seated here, doing nothing, just accepting this... I'm or... afraid there isn't anything you can do about it, Dr. White. Ah, I recognize the voice. Our visitor in the train compartment. Yes, Holmes. I may introduce myself now. My name is Gustav. Like Matilda, I'm an employee of Emil Marco, his personal representative. And I still have that same gun, you see. You've played a rather deplorable trick on us, Mr. Holmes. Have I, Gustav? We wanted your half of the plans. You left them in your luggage. We examined them carefully. Yes. They are false. They're not really your half of the plans at all, are they? An excellent counterfeit, but with its weakness. Well, that's wonderful, Holmes. Then they haven't the real half they wanted, eh? I've hardly been stupid enough to have gallivanted about the continent carrying the real half. I resent that, Gustav. You've underestimated me. I beg your pardon. Now, as for the business at hand, I'd like you to meet a friend of ours. Peter. Yeah, Gustav. Peter, this is Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. I see. I will take care of them for you. Peter was a wrestler. Unfortunately, he was drugged. His tactics were illegal. Too cruel. You may leave, Matilda. Yes, Gustav. Good night, Mr. Holmes. Doctor? Peter has made quite a study of the human body, Holmes. He's a specialist in various methods of creating unbearable pain. Yeah. I have my own way. Holmes, we want to know exactly where the real half of the plans is. Your half. I haven't the slightest intention of revealing that, Gustav. Dr. Watson, could Holmes have told you where he has hidden those papers? He did not. If he did, I would defy you to learn their whereabouts. I was afraid this would be your answer. You're a reckless gentleman, Holmes. You force me to take all sorts of steps that I am most reluctant to take. I'm a mild man at soul. I believe the problems of man versus man can be settled on a cordial level. I dislike animal tactics. But, uh, since you insist, eat up. Yeah, Gustav. Ready. I will make them talk very quickly by taking hold of the arms. On you the... may recall, Holmes, in the train compartment, I said we never kill our opponents in an ordinary manner. We torture them to death. I want to know where the papers are, Holmes. But perhaps it will require just a bit of persuasion. Peter. Yeah. So, I take this, Holmes, and... Uh, Ah. That's it, Peter. Uh, That's it. Go on. Uh, Persuade them. Yeah. Oh, 
Dr. Watson, are you going to stop here at this crucial point? Well, time will allow no more for this evening, Mr. Harris. However, next week, I shall tell you the utterly astonishing end of our adventure of the elusive agent. The most surprising development in all of Holmes's adventures. The final chapter concerned a horrible illusion, a bloody battle in an abandoned castle, and a revelation about the missing plans that altered the entire course of the First World War. The world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockrey. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelvin. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill, with special music by Albert Berman. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in the final chapter of The Adventure of the Elusive Agent. Cy Harris speaking for the Mutual Broadcasting System.